And tonight we continue to monitor breaking uh, developments surrounding the Anthony Weiner scandal. And joining me now in studio with more on that, plus an exclusive first look at what is soon to be a New York Times number one bestseller. It's the explosive, controversial new book, Demonic, How the Liberal Mob is Endangering America. It hits stores tomorrow morning. Bestselling author Ann Coulter is here. Oh, first of all, the book is phenomenal. Um, I, I, I just every time I read your books, I want to know where are the liberals are going to attack you. Let's start with the title, and it, a lot of what you say here fits in the wiener. <laughs> yeah. You know? um, yes, I mean certainly the liberal reaction to it. Mm -hmm. um, Part of I'm, what the book is about and the reason it's called demonic is that I've always sort of noticed that liberals behave in a mob-like way. Um, and, and so I read every book I could find that mentioned mobs, crowds, groupthink, and, and finally read Gustave Le Bon's The Crowd, a study of the popular mind, which he's the father of groupthink, French philosopher, social psychologist. And you read his book and page after page, oh, that's liberals, that's liberals, um, for example, creating messiahs, a, a crowd very quickly goes to extremes. They're simple-minded. They will create messiahs. And I have, I think, a hilarious chapter, only because I quote liberals, on what they say about FDR, JFK, it's about hilarious. Clinton, about Obama, the angel Obama. They're fainting at his speeches. They're, they're pledging their loyalty to him. Um, same thing with Clinton. Go back to him. And meanwhile, Ronald Reagan wasn't even the most popular conservative his first year in office. My newspaper, Human Events, which was Ronald Reagan's favorite newspaper, um, was attacking him so much. The Washington Post reported at one point that Reagan said to them, I'm still reading you guys, but I'm liking it a lot less. Yeah. And I have headlines throughout all eight years of the Reagan administration. We don't worship our leaders. We don't turn them into idols, probably because we have a real savior. Um, and we certainly don't demonize the opponents the way we do. We may ridicule them, make jokes about them. Um, but the way they turn George Bush into the enemy, the, a Nazi, George Soros and, and Al Gore, and have, and have all called, compared him to Hitler. Um, he was compared to Osama bin Laden by a New York Times op-ed writer. William Raspberry, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist, liberal, called him the devil. You, and these aren't intended to be jokes. They are not taken as jokes. And then you do get actual violence from the left. You still get it now. I have a big part in the, in the middle comparing the French Revolution and the American Revolution. It's something liberals lie about. Um, I was surprised at how many of my friends know, knew very little about the French Revolution. And then you always see it being lied about, including on Chris Matthews' show last week. Oh, it was just like ours. Wasn't that for liberty? And the New York Times talks about Bastille Day being the equivalent of the 4th of July. No, Bastille Day, it would be as if this country celebrated celebrated the L.A. riots. It was a monstrous, bestial attack on a nearly empty prison because it was an eyesore based on rumors. This is the revolt of a mob. They, it was an extremely anti-religious revolution. Um, they desecrated Notre Dame. In fact, the word vandalism had to be created because of the French Revolution and what they did to the churches and monasteries. They destroyed ancient, valuable monasteries, ripped them to the ground, hacked priests to death, gave mock sermons, wiping their behinds with, with the host and, and talking about the whore, the Virgin Mary. That was their revolution. It's the revolution of the mob. It was then followed in Russia. It was followed in Cuba. It was followed in China. It was followed in Cambodia. And by the way, liberals in this country, in the New York Times, cheered on all those revolutions that followed the French Revolution. Oddly, the successful revolution, our revolution, which was fought by Christians, Englishmen, thinkers, debaters, um, that has not been followed around the world. Um, interestingly enough, the Tea Party, was, um, the original Boston Tea Party, was not um, warmly embraced by our founding fathers. They were worried about it because they thought it was the action of a mob. Well, let me, let me just go. And one of the, right out of the box, you talk about the psychology of a liberal, and you talk about the Democratic Party is the party of a mob. Uh, irrespective of what the mob represents, mm -hmm. they activate mobs, they depend on mobs, they coddle mobs. You know, you're on Good Morning America tomorrow. The first question is going to be, are you saying all liberals and all Democrats are mobsters, <laughs> Ann Coulter? There's a point that you're making. That's why I wanted you to go uninterrupted here, because... Throughout the book, you're laying out a case that ends in a conclusion. And I, it's, it's not something we can even get in in two segments, but I really want you to follow through from that starting point and all the examples, and you lead, lead us through the, the French Revolution. 
to conclude, to come up with this title, Demonic, which, right. they'll, which they'll freak out about. Otherwise. Right. Why? How do well, we I began the book with uh, um, the scene in the Bible when Jesus approaches the possessed man, and the possessed man is screaming, he's out of his mind, he's we naked, he's running around. Legion. Don't torture me, don't torture me. And Jesus, there's a little exchange. Jesus says, what is your name? And he answers, my name is Legion. Then the demons run out of him. The demon's name is Legion. The demon is always a mob. And you see this over and over again in real life exorcisms. They talk to the possessed and it's always they. Satan saying they all belong to me. Um, and this is, I mean, it's part of why liberals are a mob and are so obsessed with status and power. Conservatives as I said, have a real savior. It's more up and down. We don't we don't care as much. In fact, Christians kind of well, like to be hated. Say, so yeah, is, is that you're you saying that all liberals are demonic? You're not saying that. There's a point, though, that you're making about mobs are always demonic. They are right. antithetical to this country's history. We have always understood that mobs were dangerous. I mean, the Shays Rebellion is what created the Constitution. It was a mob uprising, and the the Articles of Confederation weren't enough to keep the people safe. As I say the Boston Tea Party. They were very concerned that it looked like the action of a mob. And two of the participants, Paul Revere and Sam Adams, specifically defended the Boston Tea Party, saying there was no property destru destruction other than the tea. Right. Ben Franklin sa insisted that they take up a collection to repay the India Tea Company. Um, Paul Revere made sure there was a, the lock that had to be cut for the Boston Tea Party was replaced. And one guy who took tea for his personal use was severely punished. It was not the act of a mob. But even that much upset them. Many you We're have. going to come back, and as with all of your books, we try to predict <laughs> where you, you where, where the attacks are going to come from. <laughs> you can't and, do it. <laughs> no, well, I, I'm, Let's take an I, office never pool know. here at Fox and see if anyone can, but you're all going to have to read the book. I'm going to tell you where I think it is, and we'll tell you in the break. We're oh. going to take a break. We're going to come back much more.